Hello everyone, welcome to my civil engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it and hit the bell icon to get notified when I post my new videos. Today, I'll be discussing regarding how to determine the slope and deflection for a cantilever beam when it is subjected to point load or concentrated load at free end. So, as you know that basically cantilever beam is a, it is a beam uh, in which one end is free and another end is fixed. So basically the cantilever beam, it is a type of beam uh, in which one end of the beam is fixed and another end of the beam is uh, free. So here it is typically a uh, statically determinate beam where the degree of determinancy is equal to 3. So here uh, I am just considering you just uh, refer to figure 1 here. So here in the figure 1, I have considered a cantilever beam of PQ uh, sub of span equal to L and it is subjected to a point load of magnitude equal to W kilonewton at the free end. So the next figure, figure 2, it shows the uh, deflected shape of the deflected shape of the beam. So as soon as the, uh, I mean, uh, the load is applied over the free end. So at that end itself, uh, there will be deflection since uh, the another end is a fixed end. So you can you cannot expect any deflection here. So only the deflection that can happen is at the free end where the load is uh, where uh, the load is applied. So here, uh, let y is the uh, amount of deflection in mm. So theta q theta q is nothing but slope at slope at point q due to the applied load w so theta q is nothing but slope at point q where uh, uh, where load is applied so again so in the figure 3 this is a figure 3 you can just observe this figure 3 here this is the typical m by ei diagram so moment by EI diagram, what we can say that. So here, uh, how to draw the M by EI diagram is that. So I just take the sign convention in case of M by EI diagram in order to draw the M by EI diagram as. So before drawing the M by EI diagram, I need to find out the bending moment, which is the prerequisite for uh, um, you know, for drawing the M by EI diagram. So if I uh, if I start from right hand side to the left hand side uh, so moment bending moment is nothing but the moment uh, either from left or right side of the support so integration of that so here if i start from the right hand side of the support so the sign convention for the bending moment for the right hand side of the support i have taken as uh, anti clockwise anti clockwise as uh, positive and clockwise as negative so as in case of uh, right hand side support so the bending moment from right hand side to left hand side if uh, if i am supposed to calculate then in such case uh, anti clockwise moments are taken as positive and clockwise moments are taken as negative so if i draw, if i want to calculate the uh, moments from the left hand side of the support then uh, the moment the anti clockwise moments are taken as uh, uh, negative there and clockwise moments are taken as positive i just repeat it once again so uh, in order to in order to uh, find, uh, draw the m by ei diagram so the prerequisite for the m by ei diagram is a moment calculation so at the at each and every points from the uh, due to the applied load so here uh, in order to calculate i i must know what is the sign convention so um, the right hand side if i want to from the right hand side if i want to start to uh, find out the bending moment so from right hand side to left hand side if i want to find out so right hand side clockwise moments are taken as uh, negative and anti-clockwise moments are taken as positive similarly left hand side uh, to right hand side if i want to determine so left hand side clockwise is positive and anti-clockwise moments are taken as negative so here in this case the load is applied uh, at the free end that is uh, 
towards my right hand side so this is towards my right hand side i need to find out from right hand side to left so from right to left i need to find out what is the bending moment so um the moment uh, at point p due to the load uh, w it is given by load into the perpendicular distance so load into perpendicular distance so the magnitude of load is uh, w so this is w here so into perpendicular distance here from p uh, q to p it is l there so the total value of moment here is w into l so i need uh, i need to go along the direction of force through the line of action i need to go along the direction of force through the line of action so that it it is a uh, clockwise uh, moment so clockwise moments i need to take it as negative why it is negative since i am going from right to left so if i go if i am going from right to left so as per the sign convention right side uh, clockwise is negative and anti clockwise is positive therefore my w into l will be minus w into l so here uh, only one uh, point is there where i need to determine the moment so in between there is no points here so only one moment it will be there so it is uh, uh, minus w into l so uh, i'll just take the baseline here so this is the baseline here so at the uh, if uh, uh, the moment is zero the point will be exactly on the baseline therefore at the uh, point q will lie exactly on the baseline itself so uh, at point p it is uh, minus w into l so it is uh, in the downward direction uh, why it is in downward direction because uh, what all the moments which are uh, which are acting uh, which are taken as negative that is uh, it should come below the baseline and what all the moments uh, it is positive it will come above the baseline so since the moment what we have uh, Uh, got uh, uh, from q to p it is uh, uh, the um, uh, i mean it is in the negative direction so i have plotted uh, minus w uh, l in the downward direction so since the load uh, the load nature here it is uh, um, u i mean the point load so the uh, variation of bending moment is a linear variation Uh, as in case of concentrated load the bending moment variation uh, here is uh, linear therefore i just uh, join uh, the two points in a straight line so next so since it is m by ei therefore m at point p is minus w into l divided by ei so it will be in the form of m by ei m is the moment what i have got at point p it is minus w into l so whole divided by ei if you do then this will be the m by ei diagram so the next point is determination of a slope so slope as per the we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture series uh, how to determine the slope so it has been explained in theorem one of the momentaria method so slope uh, at free end slope is nothing but the area of m by ei diagram so as per the first moment area theorem so here i need to determine the slope at free end so it is uh, i just go back to the slide one here so i have considered this uh, uh, m by ei diagram so i need to determine slope at the uh, at the at uh, the free end uh, so i i want i need to consider the overall uh, sketch here so i need to find out the area of overall m by ei diagram so the area will be so the area is equal to Uh, area of the triangle so area of the triangle means here it is half into base into height so half into base here is l the overall distance that is l into height is nothing but this value that is m by ei value so it will become uh, so it will become uh, theta q that is equal to half into l into minus wl by ei so half into l into 
minus W L by E I. So here uh, as in case of uh, theta Q it will be minus W L square divided by 2 I uh, 2 E I. So minus W L square divided by 2 E I is the value. So since uh, if we uh, uh, it will become positive why because it is a clockwise with the tangent from point P. So since the tan uh, it is a clockwise moment uh, from tangent P so you can just observe here so you can just observe here so it is um, uh, you have the dotted lines here so this is the initial position so this is the final deflected position so this is the angle theta so this is the point P so it makes a clockwise angle here so it makes a clockwise angle here like this so here if it may if at all make it as a clockwise angle so from point P it is a clockwise moment so it is taken as positive if you are going to take from point P in consideration okay so the next uh, so this is all about the determination of uh, slope and concern so the next point is uh, determination of uh, deflection so deflection i need to find out uh, the free end itself so uh, as per the previous lecture series i have discussed how to determine the deflection that is uh, by using second theorem of momentaria method so that is also called as deflection uh, uh, deflection theorem so here deflection at q i need uh, i have supposed to be fi uh, finding out here so deflection at q here i uh, is nothing but of uh, i need to find out the overall area so that is nothing but the product of area product of area of m by ei diagram and its centroidal distance from the reference point and its centroidal uh, distance from the uh, reference point and here the reference point is nothing but the uh, point to uh, from which the deflection uh, I mean the point on which the deflection has to be de determined so here uh, let me consider this uh, point what it is there here as a centroidal point so uh, if I want to find out the deflection here so it is nothing but area of this overall m by ei diagram so into the centroidal distance from the uh, reference point I mean from the reference point so here the reference point is point Q where I need to find out the de uh, deflection so here as per the triangular rule um, this is a longer side so if I just uh, consider this dot as a centroidal point so from uh, here the point Q to this point uh, the distance will be the centroidal distance to uh, from the reference point to the centroidal point so here uh, I just consider that distance uh, the centroidal distance as x here so from the triangular property so here it is a lo uh, longer side so if this is a longer side so it will be uh, x will be equal to two third of l so since it is a longer distance so x is always equal to two third of l so and from here it will be one third of l so uh, since it is a triangle from the property of triangles if i want to find out the uh, reference point you just see whether uh, it is a longer side or shorter side so since it is a longer side so x will be equal to two third of l here so again um, it is uh, as i said that it is a pro uh, it is the product of area of m by ei diagram into centroidal distance from point q to the centroidal uh, point that is o so y is equal to area of triangle is half into base into height uh, so half into base is l there and then uh, half uh, is uh, uh, half into base is l overall length and then uh, h is nothing but the wl by ei that is m by ei so into the centroidal distance that is x so into x i need to calculate so if i just substitute the value this is the overall equation so if i just simplify that i'll get what is the value that is y q or uh, overall y is equal to w l cube divided by 3 i 3 e i so it is a uh, minus uh, sign it is with a negative sign so negative sign indicates that the deflection here occurring in uh, downward direction 
so negative sign it indicates that the deflection here in this case is in downward direction so always for a cantilever beam slope and deflection will be maximum in case uh, in the free end side so i just repeated for always for a cantilever beam slope and deflection is maximum at the free end and minimum at the fixed end okay so in my next video i'll be uh, focusing on uh, how to determine slope and deflection for a cantilever beam when it is subjected to uh, uniformly distributed load throughout the entire span thank you for watching